What is up, Lee Tribe? So I don't know if you noticed, but if you look down below, we finally made it to 100,000 subscribers. And I say we because I could not have done it, obviously, without you guys watching and supporting my channel. So I just wanted to say thank Thank you. So I'm really looking forward to getting that, you know, plaque. And I have to be honest, I haven't been one that's really been watching or caring about my number of subscribers because subscribers don't necessarily indicate your level of success at all, as I've talked about in other videos. But at the same doggone time, it's a milestone that I'm very, very proud of, you know, because that that takes a lot of work. And we're not going to talk about how long it took me to get here. <laughs> <laughs> but I got here, but I couldn't have done it, out, done it without you guys watching and supporting my channel. And especially those of you who share how my channel has motivated you or helped you make a certain amount of money or whatever, like my phone is ringing. You guys don't know how much that motivates me. Okay, I had to wait for the phone to stop ringing. But um, I don't remember what I was saying other than just thank you guys. Um, subscribers are great, but knowing that your videos are impacting people and helping people that you don't, you guys just don't know what that means to someone like myself who really just enjoys teaching and motivating people. So I really do appreciate your support. All right, enough of all that gushy stuff. <laughs> Let's get to today's video. Um, I want to talk about scaling t-shirt designs. And, and when, when I talk about scaling ideas, we were discussing this in my group. My definition of scaling can mean a couple of things, but this has been a huge, huge, huge part of my um, income on print on demand, especially merch by Amazon. When one idea sells and then I'll scale it in two different directions. So I'm going to talk about what I mean by that in this video. And I'm also going to give you some tips for how to use these emails that the POD send out to get inspiration for what is selling on their site. All right. So this is an email that T public just sent out. And if you upload to T public, you know that they have sales every three days <laughs> they always have sales going on and one of the things i like about the emails they send out is it gives you a great idea of what's hot because obviously they are promoting designs that are their best sellers they're not going to waste their email list just promoting random designs there's a strategy behind this they're usually relevant designs like it's graduation season so you see couple of graduation shirts here and they're like I said best sellers and sometimes even on the title it'll say our trending designs or our best sellers or whatever so for example if you look through here one of the things I noticed right away is I see two animals doing something and one thing that I have noticed and I have seen whether it's on Amazon Spreadshirt Redbubble Tee Public People like designs with animals or characters doing everyday life stuff. They do. And sloths, that makes sense because sloths have been hot over the last few years. So of course this person has a sloth, 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 sloth <laughs> with a diploma. So what some people would do is they would say, oh, I'm going to create another sloth with a diploma, but he's going to hold it in his left hand instead of the right hand or whatever. But the take home is not to just create another sloth with a diploma. The take home is, wow, I've noticed that I've seen a lot of animals or characters doing things on t-shirts. It seems like people really, really like those. So that's the angle I'm going to take, especially for this site, because I noticed that I see a lot of these in the emails that they send out. And also if you go to Amazon's best practices page, they even tell you here under the product testing, it says one of the things that works well is character driven designs, typically doing something. And that's exactly what you're seeing here with the sloth holding a uh, diploma and then of course it's themed to graduation so you take a holiday and then you pair it with something that has been selling which is designs on sloths right so let's say this is my design and i have this sloth holding a diploma and it sells one time typically when something sells what i'll do is i'll say okay because I don't have the data that tells me what keyword somebody searched to, you know, find my shirt and buy it, only the site has that data. They don't give that to us, unfortunately. I have two things that could have made this shirt sell. Was it the fact um, somebody was searching for something about sloths or were they searching for graduation and they just happened to come upon this design with the sloth and they bought it? I don't know what they searched for. So what I'll do is I'll scale this two ways. So I will then do another animal, maybe a beagle, for example, holding a diploma. And then maybe I'll do a cat 
holding a diploma. So I'll have like 10 designs of 10 different characters holding a diploma. And then I'll also test other sloth related designs. So I'll scale this in two ways. I will scale the diploma graduation idea, but then I'll also scale the sloth idea. So I'll have the sloth just doing random things, drinking a cup of coffee, kicking a soccer ball. So I'm still combining the sloth with other like real life activities. So after 30 days or so, I'll go, okay, most of my designs that have sold actually have been the sloth doing various activities. So I'm gonna create more designs with sloths doing those activities. Does that make sense? So you're, you're basically trying to figure out what is working best, but you can only do that by putting out a variety of different designs. Let me give you guys another example. Let's say you create a t-shirt of a cow holding a teacup and on the shirt it says moo long, get it? Moo long, like oolong tea, but it's a cow, so moo, yeah. So that sells and you go, okay, is this a cow lover that found this shirt or is it a tea lover? So I might create more teas with the animal you know, drinking tea, maybe go tea, get it, go tea, you have a goat. And you guys, I know this sounds really cheesy, but sometimes the cheesiest stuff sells, right? So, and what's great about the word tea is you can do so much with tea, go tea, mana tea, of course you're spelling tea, T-E-A. So you have all these animals incorporating the tea, right? And so you just put out those designs and see if any of them stick. And then you can also do some tea drinking designs. They might not be animal related, but you're just trying to figure out what's going to stick with this tea idea, T-E-A, not <laughs> t-shirt idea, you know? And so that's kind of how my mind works when it comes to scaling. And it's one of those things you just really have to give it time because when something sells, a lot of times you don't really know exactly why it sold, right? You don't know what that person typed in or how they found it. So you're just putting out more ideas to just sort of see where you can scale the best. And that's a lot of what I do. And that's why I've sold with so many different keyword combinations because I'm always doing variations of designs once they sell the first time. This is the other thing I want to point out. Look at this shirt here. It says, yes, I've graduated. No, I don't have a job lined up. Now, this is what I want to say about this. This is my, in my opinion, is a clever shirt. I don't think that there are any great keywords in here. I mean, obviously graduation t-shirt is probably the only uh, good keyword and that's very broad. But I have to be honest, you guys, sometimes I just put up a shirt that I think is a good idea. I don't always focus so much on keywords. And I know that's contrary to what everybody and even what I tell you guys. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact my POD business is more established than a lot of you guys. So I have that leeway, especially when you're building a brand, you don't have to worry so much about keywords because you have your audience. But sometimes if you just have a good idea, even if it's a little on the broad side, just put it out there. This is a great example of someone taking the graduation space and saying, what are some themes surrounding graduation that really speak to a lot of graduates? How many of you were like this? You graduated and you kind of felt a little insecure about not having a job and you got tired of people asking you, do you have a job? That was me. I got so sick of people asking me, what are you gonna do after that? I don't know. So this is something a lot of graduates feel and they just went with it. You know, there isn't a keyword. So a lot of people will say, but what keyword would you target? Sometimes you just want to put up an idea. And I know that that's not good advice in terms of, you know, tracking and SEO, but doggone it, sometimes you just want to put it out there. And I've done that. And sometimes they sell. Also, the other thing that I think helps is when you have an established shop, they have 26 pages of design. And when you have an account that is selling a lot, the POD is automatically going to promote your stuff more. And it makes sense. If you were T Public and you had this shop that was selling 10 designs per day and they had a high percentage of their designs selling, wouldn't you rank and promote their stuff more? Yeah, because their stuff is selling and you know that they can sell. And since it helps them make money, of course they're gonna promote the shops that are doing the best. So for this person, it, it's more about volume now because maybe they're more established. So even though the graduation keyword was very broad, 
maybe the fact that this person is selling a lot of stuff, it might have brought some more visibility to the more generic stuff. So yes, it's helpful to start with keyword research and really understanding keywords. But once you get established, once you start selling, you can start working on just being creative. And that's the fun part. You don't have to obsess about how many keywords do I need in my title and stuff like that. So it is a combination of keyword research, but also sometimes if you have a good idea, I just say, put that doggone thing out there, you know, and that's kind of how I work. I go back and forth with keyword research to this is a good idea. I'm just going to put it out here. I don't care if it's broad. And I know we don't talk about that a lot when we're teaching this. Everybody's always like, you got to get the right keyword. You got to get the right keyword. Yes, that's helpful. But once your shop gets more established, you can work more on creativity because you're going to get that ranking advantage of having that established shop. And I do believe most of these POD sites give advantages to shops that are selling more. It just makes sense. It, it just makes business sense. And if they're not doing that, that would be crazy because it helps them make more money at the end of the day. So summing everything up, when you get these emails from Redbubble, Public, pay attention to what is being featured because you can really, really learn a lot about what sells and then go to the site, study what is ranked first, the kind of art that's ranked first. Because I think a lot of you are probably uploading designs to different sites that just don't really fit the audience. You know, T Public, Redbubble, and Society6 are more artistic platforms. You see more stuff like I've been highlighting here. Um, they weren't super artistic, but you do see a lot of art like this here. You also see a lot of character stuff, people, you know, cartoons doing things like that. And that just works for that platform. So a lot of this is also discovering what sells on each platform. So. I hope that helped. I'll talk to you guys later.